Welcome friends to the much anticipated, I have been putting it off, but I'm ready to do it. A year into not growing food, how's my pantry doing? Welcome to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel. I am a homesteader. I do grow and preserve all of our food and we didn't grow any last year. So come with me, we're gonna take a peek into the pantry, talk about last year, what did it, it look like when we left and how are we looking now? Okay, so last year, um, I believe it was, I don't think I said this in my intro, it was a year ago, two weeks, since we basically shut down canning season from uh, the 2022 growing season for the big heavy lift of canning. Knowing we were going into basically two year cycle of eating from this pantry, I'm almost positive this bottom row was stacked two rows deep and there was boxes out on the floor. I'm almost positive. And I know that there was overflow into this middle section. That doesn't exist anymore. There's still a couple boxes down there. Um, but I have co consistently pulled from that overstock and added it back to the pantry shelves. Everything's doing good. I have, what am I nervous about? I only have two rows of pickles left. That makes me nervous because I probably eat a jar of pickles every two weeks. And that's, I'll have to probably start conserving my pickle consumption. I have one jar of black beans left, which we don't grow black beans, but I do keep them canned. I think I have some in my five gallon buckets I can pull out and can. And I only have one can of chicken left, but I do have some chickens in the freezer I can pull out and can. Um, one jar of ketchup left. I'll talk to you about how I can solve that problem when we get to the quartz. And everything else pretty good pretty good broth i could probably add some more pint sizes of broth when i restock my chicken but i don't think i'm nervous about this this is now one more year right i got to get all the way through to basically july through october's heavy canning season so i gotta make it till kind of October-ish on this, and I think we'll be good. I don't think I ever in my life need to can as much cowboy candy as I canned <laughs> the last two years because I easily have a five year supply of cowboy candy. Um, but yeah, I think we did good. We've, we're using it, we're consuming it. It's all going great. If you have any questions on anything that you see in the shelf or if you watch last year's pantry video where I really go into each and everything a little bit more detail, feel free to ask, um, but not too worried. I think the only other thing that I'll point out is back here behind the shelves. When I did that video, I'm probably sh thinking that there was maybe stacked of empty jars, maybe three three cases deep of quartz and pints, and now it's just a wall of empty jars. So that really tells you how much we've been consuming. And what new things have I added? I didn't do a lot of canning this year. I added pears from our pear harvest this year, and that was like five pints, pear juice. And I'll talk about a couple other things when we get over to the quartz. But yeah, not a lot. Okay, let's head over to the quartz and see what we got over going on over there. All right, so before we get to the quartz, though, I was walking by this. And this is probably my biggest prize possession from this year, taking this year's rest from growing a garden, per se, versus having time to invest in really time I don't have to invest otherwise and that was really building up my tea um, harvesting so this is all my effort this year i had some of this from last year but not this much at all 
of herbals and wild forage to create my own teas. So I did do a video this year of making my women's tea and it's just so, so, so pretty. And a lot of this is for that. So there's rose, there's raspberry leaves, strawberry leaves, um, lemon balm, mint, whorehound. I got um, my freeze dried blueberries for some fun blueberry tea. And there is some herbs here, violets, borage, chamomile, clover, um, of course, dill, chives, oregano, just so much fun. I'm like loving this section and I hope to bring you guys more tea blends to give you guys more ideas. I've done, I believe, um, mother and toddler tea and uh, like women's health all purpose tea. So we'll see what else I can come up with for fun this winter and maybe we'll do some gifting of some this Christmas. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about the top shelf because that's all just spices and nothing to do with my canning or anything like that or anything I personally grow. Tomato products. So, and it looks like I still have a lot, but again, um, I'll get to the bottom shelves. That was completely jam-packed and overflowing on the floor. Um, so I have refilled, I have three, four rows of spaghetti sauce still, one row of Cajun and one, two, three, four, five rows of chili base still. And we have eaten so much of all of that, but because I had overflow, I've been able to restock and we're gonna be just fine eating that amount. We need to properly space the consumption of chili to spaghetti. <laughs> so that we equally consume both, but those are our two major uses of tomato-based meals, I should say. You know, I have the pizza sauce in the pints, ketchup in the pints, then and all the barbecue sauce, and then spaghetti and chili. And then green beans, you can see we have eaten through a lot, so this was all the way over here. Um, I pulled up the fajita meat so we can see it because that was at the bottom. And I have three in three rows and three jars of green beans left. One partial row of green beans and potatoes. A few cans of chili beans left. And then that's all broths. And again, pulling from restocking from the bottom. Carrots. We're doing a good job working down on the carrots that we least like. And I have two rows and a half of the good carrots that we love. So that's sad. We will use our carrots wisely with all the other vegetables that we have. And I should mention, I have a chest freezer here next to me, guys, that is still jam-packed full of lots of veggies that we pull from, things like broccoli, cabbage, peas. Um, that's mainly what we usually grab from there. But let's go down to the bottom three rows and I'll show you how those are doing. Okay, wow, well, so you can see that the bottom is basically three rows of just plain tomato sauce. So I mentioned I was out of ketchup over there. Oh, well, I had one jar left. So I can pull up some of those quarts and make more ketchup and restock that. If I'm not gonna get low on pizza sauce, there's plenty over there still, plenty of salsa. Um, if anything, maybe a time will come when I could potentially need more spaghetti sauce and I can always pull those tomatoes jars of um, tomato sauce and make more spaghetti sauce if needed. But that is like my reserve reserve. Um, and there was just so much on this shelf that has just been pulled and restocked. Let's see, this shelf obviously is very low. The only thing new here, and I did a video on this, is blueberry pie filling since that video. And we've used, I think I had two whole rows of blueberry pie filling. We've used that really well. I, I had two rows of Brussels sprouts. I'm al almost down to just one row left. One row, oh no, I've got two rows still of our curry. Um, and I had lots of curry, so we've eaten that really well. 
beets. Um, I believe at one time there was probably five rows of beets. We're down to three. Probably potatoes is the one thing that we're going to definitely run out on. So I did buy some potatoes. The potatoes I got from the farmer's market just did not hold up for me. A lot of those were turned into our potato soup base that I just did a recipe on. This is brand new. Um, so potatoes will be one thing that I, I know this will not last us until October of next year. Maybe I can stretch it till summer and we just go without. I'm not sure. Um, and then our squash, I already talked about this row, right? I didn't say anything about our pumpkin and squash. I'm gonna be fine on that. That's not used that, that heavily by us, but there's still two rows of that. And I did see, I'm worried about my pickles, but I keep forgetting I have quarts of pickles over here. So I need to use those. I think we're good. I'm, I'm really not worried. I'm not worried. I think I planned so, so well um, working my way up to this. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about next. Okay, so here's the thing. I am humbled by this still myself because I didn't grow up knowing how to do this. I wasn't raised around any of this. I didn't start this journey till much, much later in my life. Like I'm talking my 40s. So you don't have to be intimidated that, you know, in your heart's desire, this is something that you want to do. My best advice is just start. Just start where you are. I started where I was in suburban area, like a very small backyard with two raised garden beds and just practiced canning. I think I made salsa Basically, I tried spaghetti sauce with, I think, a thousand cherry tomatoes because that's all that grew in my garden. Um, but I was just had this passion to learn. And that can be one of the most intimidating things for some of us. I know for me, like, I don't like necessarily trying something that I might not be good at. And I think that that's the biggest thing I had to get over, like not to get discouraged or dissatisfied with I tried it and it just didn't work for me well learn instead turning that into what can I learn from that well my pickles were soft mm, let me go figure out why and I didn't go over all that but I want to tell you guys my heart's desire was to give you a place to start and I honestly <laughs> wrote a little help for helpful little garden planner for you guys and it was just how do I get my brain on paper so that beginner gardeners or gardeners that just struggle with I'm still not growing enough for my family or it's never working out year over year as much as I have good intentions maybe this will help you this is Honestly, what goes through my brain when I plan, when I think about, okay, I need to put up 30 jars of spaghetti sauce this year. And I'll tell you, so all that came from taking a garden journal year over year and learning from it. And so the best place you can start is on page, <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna find it, page two and just start with documenting your very first year and write down your year and plan out your garden, plan out your goals, document what you wanna grow, how much of it you wanna grow and what your end result and your preservation plans are. That's all in here for you guys. Grids to make your garden plans, um, I have nice little reference guides for you on um, how much per sir, you know person versus an average family size. You can do your own household adjustments for that. And I know most of all is that what I need to grow for me and Todd is different from what you want to grow for your family to replace your dependency on the grocery store. 
So this is available now. It's not going to have the not for resale sign on it. This is just my author copy. But it's going to be available. It is available for you on Amazon today at a super affordable price, $12.99. And it's honestly just um, a project of my heart um, to hopefully bless you guys. So that if this is a desire for you, you can do something like this too. And... Um, and working as hard as I did at my pantry allowed me to take this year off and to be okay. We haven't really bought anything from the store other than I went to farmer's market and bought onions and potatoes. So those were the two main things that I knew I would need this year. So thanks guys for coming with me on the big one year update of not growing anything. Are we still still sustaining ourselves from the food that we've grown? And we are, and that includes um, our chicken, our turkey, our goat that are in the freezer. Um, so it's been really, really rewarding to see. And I will make some adjustments now. So at the end of this next cycle, stay tuned. We'll go all the way through when I first start doing those big canning hauls and I'll say, what do I need to adjust? Like, you don't ever need to put up that much more like cowboy candy again. Um, and we'll make adjustments from there. So I'll see you guys then. I'm excited to get growing again next year and see you back in the kitchen canning and preserving. Bye guys.